What is a reactionary? That is the topic for today's video. And it's something I've been mulling over for a couple of months. I mean, not consistently, but you know what I mean. Back in April, I did this video, The New Counterculture. It was basically a video about how punk, you know, the, the music, the aesthetic, the scene, was primarily about being irreverent, and therefore did not have any particular political slant. You can be irreverent towards the left, you can be irreverent towards the right, you can be irreverent towards anything. If your goal is to make somebody who is overly sensitive clutch their pearls, that is rather apolitical in the end. And the video was basically about how there's been a lot of radical left astroturfing of punk, conveniently forgetting that the 90s had a lot of Nazi punks, in fact. But this video led Vosh, who I, I guess he's a punk? I don't know, to make um, a counter video to it, to be a reply girl, in fact, and call me a fascist. I think maybe also an alt-writer or a Nazi, I'm not sure. But definitely called me a, a reactionary, you know, reactionary conservatism or something along those lines. But basically the term reactionary was used quite a bit, which made it all the more funny when he ended the video with, you know, if this guy wants to come talk to me, it's fine. Yeah, uh, when you poison the well that badly, I don't know if that's really a conversation in good faith. But my point is, as soon as Vosh made his video, a whole bunch of his fans decided to start posting comments on mine. And they all used the same terminology. Reactionary. Here's Master Adam 100. We have a word for people who consider themselves punk, but think it only means to offend people in general. Posers. Punks punch up, not down. Reactionary conservatism is literally what punk stood against from the beginning. I asked, what do you mean by reactionary? And they didn't reply. But of course, it's the whole punks punch up, not down thing, because it's all about power politics to them. It's all about one set of rules for thee and another for me. No bad tactics, only bad targets, as any good radical would say. I feel as though the tone driven by this video is very reactionary. I say that because for a while I would frequent KIA or other boards, and genuinely I don't think of them as hotspots for incel extremism or whatever, but they do complain in a similar way about the people they have a problem with. Hey look, more reactionary YouTube filth. And it's always a treat when somebody hates you so much that they bleed over into your other avenues. This comment wasn't even left on that video, but in fact was a reply to my playing Hollow Knight on my gaming channel, calling me a dull reactionary. He, of course, also refused to define the term. Well, I'm sorry that I didn't redistribute my geo, dude. This guy ends his post with, sorry this is a bit rambly, but I'm high as shit right now. And to that I say, yeah, I think we can tell. <laughs> you seem to really misunderstand punk and its politics. Firstly, you are describing liberals, not leftists just because they are somewhat tolerant on social issues and might want a slightly increased welfare state does not make them leftist. I actually agree with that, which is why whenever the right says, those damn liberals are... No, no, liberals are the center. I suppose the internet right, the incels, the alt-right, the alt-light, etc., could be considered countercultural, but only in the same way as the Nazi punks of the 80s. Against the mainstream, but acting as reactionaries and not revolutionaries. You seem to be seeing current social issues, and instead of confronting them and going forward, wanting to instead go backwards to a previous time where they were less present, but instead other issues were present instead. And then to say we did manage to move society back to that time, what is to say the same forces that led us to the present won't act again, creating a cycle. What I'm trying to say is, the main politics of punk was anarchism, and that real anarchists still exist, and we need to organize to create the world we desire. Okay. Real anarchists need to organize. <laughs> I hope everyone else finds that as funny as I do every single time I fucking read it. <laughs> but it's this comment that really shows off the problem behind the phrase reactionary, especially how these people use it. This guy characterizes politics as going forward or going backwards, assuming that there is a correct political path for human advancement, when there actually isn't. Left wing is not forward, right wing is not backward. And even though time may be linear, politics isn't. I mentioned this on a podcast that I was on uh, a couple months ago, and I'll be, I'll be back on it again, by the way, in a couple weeks. It was British Knight's podcast, if you, if you know the YouTuber. But basically, on that podcast I mentioned that a lot of these people have an oversimplified view of human advancement, whether it's technological, political, philosophical, whatever. They believe it works like a skill tree in civilization, where you just level up and choose the next path and it's all kind of linear, but that is absolutely not how it works. In the same vein, he uses the phrase acting like revolutionaries under the assumption that that is inherently good, and acting like reactionaries under the assumption that's inherently bad. 
when there are plenty of examples of bad revolutions and good reactions. And I'll get into that in a little bit. This is not a video about calling out shitty commenters, I swear. I'm using these to illustrate a point, and this is the last one. I pinned this comment on the video for a reason. I'm sorry, name the date we stopped bombing the shit out of the Middle East. Name the date the US was able to receive universal healthcare and tuition-free college. For fuck's sake, name the President of the United States. If you don't think the left is still fighting the establishment, you suffer from headass. Trump is Bush 2.0. He is a corporatist vulture who is bailing out every financial institution at the expense of the working man. He loves Israel. He loves war. He ran on an anti-establishment message and failed to deliver on any of it. Now, regardless of how you actually feel about Trump, if you think Trump is like Bush, you have such a limited understanding of politics and history that you really shouldn't be having this conversation. Do you guys recall maybe a year ago or whatever when Trump wanted to pull out of Syria, which by the way is part of pulling out of the Middle East, and the leftist war hawks shrieked about abandoning the Kurds? Why did Trump meet with North Korea's dictator, something that no US president has ever done? Why did he actually begin building the border wall? Now, you might not like the border wall, that, that's legitimate. There's actually a discussion to be had there whether you should be pro or anti-wall. But the point is, immigration reform was promised by Bush, Clinton, and Obama at some point during their political careers. And Trump is the only one who took those words and translated them into action. There are very obvious ways that Trump is not cut from the same cloth as the previous presidents. And it's because he's not part of the neolib neocon two sides of the same coin dynamic. And I will say, just for completionist's sake, you have a guy here screaming about universal healthcare and tuition-free college. When did punk abandon its hyper-individualistic do-it-yourself ethic and begin screaming for the man to throw them a few scraps? I guess you're a fucking sellout, dude. But if you need any more proof that it's the left continuing the Middle East wars and not Trump, this happened last week. House panel, controlled by the Democrats, votes to constrain Afghan drawdown, asks for assessment on incentives to attack U.S. troops. The House Armed Services Committee voted Wednesday to put roadblocks on President Trump's ability to withdraw from Afghanistan, including requiring an assessment on whether any country has offered incentives for the Taliban to attack U.S. and coalition troops. It is both the neo-libs and neocons that want eternal war in the Middle East. Trump is not one of them, and that's why they're roadblocking him. But we still haven't gotten to the actual definition of reactionary yet, have we? And I know I can just go and look it up, but you know how these people work with definitions, right? If the dictionary definition does not play into their favor, then they'll scream and cry about it, they'll say that it's not real because it's white supremacist or whatever. So I want to get the definition from their mouths. And I finally got it. This comment was posted on a video on modern day debate. It was Sargon versus Brenton talking about should trans women be able to compete in women's sports? And here's the comment thread. So Sargon gets to answer the how do you know that question with because every human knows that. But meanwhile, when he chooses to ask the same question, how do you know that, and Brenton follows it up with peer-reviewed publication in a scientific journal, Sargon just shrugs it off. Pretty much all Sargon does that's even close to being productive is just a bunch of scoffs and disrespectful smirks. Sargon, why is your goal evidently to be a complete putz, appealing to a double standard every step of the way? I haven't watched the whole debate yet, and this might actually be a legitimate question to ask Sargon if it turns out that Sargon is in fact ignoring data coming out of studies. That's not the point. The point is Jacob's reply. This is what reactionaries do in every debate. They are anti-intellectual, and there's a reason nobody in academics takes them seriously, and the world will continue to progress while they jerk off to their feelings. I will have a video on anti-intellectualism coming soon, because it is not the reactionaries that are burning books right now. But nonetheless, seeing an opportunity, I decide to jump in. Jacob, what's a reactionary? <laughs> Emma here says, Someone who dares to say no to bullshit. <laughs> okay, okay. Jacob says, you should know, you literally are one. And this is when you can kind of tell that this guy probably watches Vosh. But yeah, these guys, they always just view reactionary as an insult they can sling around. In fact, they react in saying it. It's kind of strange. I say, no, 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 seriously, I'm asking in good faith. What is your definition of the term reactionary? And he says, a person or entity holding political views that favor a return to a previous political state of society that they believe possessed characteristics that are negatively absent from the contemporary status quo of a society. So that's when you get people like in the 70s looking at, you know, all the hippies and all, all the drugs and sex and rock and roll. And they're like, man, the nifty 50s, they were so much better. There's a morality that's missing in contemporary society. That is what it sounds like a reactionary is to these people. And okay, fair enough. And, in fact, as you can see from the very first sentence of the Wikipedia article on Reactionary, he simply copied what was on Wikipedia. It sounds like what's written here is probably okay for him. 
As an adjective, the word reactionary describes points of view and policies meant to restore a past status quo. The word reactionary is often used in the context of the left-right political spectrum, and is one tradition in right-wing politics. In popular usage, it is commonly used to refer to a highly traditional position, one opposed to social or political change. A reactionary yearns to overturn a present condition of perceived decadence and recover an idealized past. Such reactionary individuals and policies favor societal transformation, in contrast to conservative individuals or policies that seek incremental change or to preserve what exists in the present. What's interesting is that this does not seem like it is inherently right-wing. Conservatives generally want incremental change. They don't want radical change, whether it's a radical leap forward or radically regressing backwards. Basically, conservatives want to take things slow, while reactionaries seem to want to do things quite quickly. And the use of the term in this context has been picking up steam. You'll find it in the bios of these far-left Twitter nutjobs, just like you'll find it in the comments of YouTube videos. A quick search of Vosh himself using the term seems to show that it's one of his most popular of all time. I'm going to be seeing that Twitch deer girl in reactionary YouTube thumbnails for the next six months, aren't I? <laughs> you know, it's almost like somebody did something wrong and people are reasonable to react to that. Like, if somebody burst into my house, jumped up on top of my kitchen table and started taking a shit, is the fact that I'm reacting to it negative? <laughs> I don't know, dude. And of course, he views being labeled a reactionary as such a, a terrible thing that he has to... He has to quantify it, like, I don't think you're a reactionary, or I don't think this is reactionary. As if having a reasonable reaction to a negative state of affairs is a bad thing. Of course, he conflates conservatives and reactionaries, because to a revolutionary, somebody who wants to go slow is the same thing as somebody who wants to go back. But the funniest one of all is this one. I'm done pretending tankies are just a quirky, harmless outlier to leftist communities. From now on, I'll be treating them like the reactionaries they are. The tankies? They are your natural end result. I know you don't like it, I know you don't believe it, I know you don't want to hear it. But all communism, if given enough time and enough room to advance and reach its natural end result, it will always turn into the USSR. It will always turn into China. Anarcho-communism does not and cannot exist. Anarcho-anything cannot exist. As you like to say, human behavior trends towards cooperation, and cooperation eventually is going to require some kind of hierarchy, some kind of organization. But more importantly than that, as soon as you have some kind of revolution and somebody doesn't want to go along with you, you will have to use state force in order to make them go along with you. And that will necessitate an authoritarian communist state. Vosh, the tankies are just you in about 10 years. So we have our definition of reactionary. To these people, it's somebody who idealizes a previous political paradigm and wants a return to that. And in order to make that return happen, they want to reverse progress. Of course, that means that I'm reactionary, according to these people, even though there's really no evidence for that. Just like there's no evidence for me being right-wing, and a whole bunch of evidence for me not being right-wing, but they don't really care about that. But remember Vosh conflating conservative and reactionary? Conflating go slow with go backwards? That is part of the you-can't-stand-still-on-a-moving-train type of philosophy. The point of the metaphor is that when a train is going forward, even if you stand still while you're on it, you're still going forward. And you really only have two choices, either go forward with the train or go backward. This idea came from, I think, Howard Zinn. He wrote, You're on a train and somebody unseen is driving it somewhere bad. You can jump off. You can try to stop it. Or you can sit there with your head down, minding your own business, trying to stay out of trouble. Neutrality. Except you can't be neutral. The train's moving, and like it or not, you happen to be on it. You're either resisting or complicit. To this kind of radicalism, there can be no neutrality. Which is why it will always be amusing to me to... Which is why it will always be amusing to me to hear this come out of a leftist's mouth when it was actually a hallmark of rightist thought during the George Bush era. Every nation in every region now has a decision to make. Either you are with us or you are with the terrorists. Either you're with us Either you love freedom and with nations which embrace freedom, or you're with the enemy. There's no in-between. You're either with us or you're with the enemy. That's, that's clear. I will continue to make that clear. If you're not with me, then you're my enemy. But because Howard Zinn's idea states that there is no neutral, only forward or backward, only pro or against, that also means that in such conditions where there are many different options, you know, like far right, right, 
center right, centrist, center left, left, far left, in situations where, in reality, your choices consist of a wide spectrum of available options, then everything gets boiled down to forward or backward by this philosophy. And forward becomes everything that the speaker wants to be the truth, or wants to be good, or personally advocates for, and backward becomes everything else. That is how you get ridiculous posts like this, where the radical views this to be the perception, you know, all the various political figures on the political spectrum, and they think the reality is everyone is jammed over towards the right, Bernie Sanders is a centrist, and there is this fantasy land beyond the far left, which is where they exist. You have to have fully bought into this theory if you think this is the reality. That's also how you get this diagram. This is something that I used in one of my previous videos, but it basically shows how my normal center-left views became alt-right or far-right or Nazi to the extremists on the left. And in fact, one of the commie idiots tweeting at me a few months ago really went into the nitty-gritty of how this works. Left has always been left. Center left is just lip service while keeping the same damaging capitalist system flowing, just like the right wing both give lip service to their sets of morals and keeps the rich rich. This person views center left as right wing, even though there are obvious differences between them, because it is all or nothing for them. As time goes on and we progress, old left wing views turn right, and those stuck in them try to conserve them even when they're wrong. She is outright admitting that the shifting of the Overton window, the pushing of things ever more leftward, and the transformation of far left positions, say 50 years ago, into center right or right wing, is deliberate and intentional by these people. This is why they will never stop. It's why they will always descend into purity spirals, expelling those who are not pure enough and splintering off into ever smaller special interest groups. It's why their activists, even if they get everything that they want, will invent new grievances and continue to push for them. On the practical side of things, it's because they've become a bureaucracy and just want more money. But on the ideological side of things, it's because they truly believe that all things left are good and all things right are bad. And that society is meant to trend ever more leftward over time. And if you disagree with that, you're just a reactionary. Of course, this person doesn't really know what they're talking about because they immediately contradict themselves. Literally, your whole channel is right-wing, lol. You're against everything left. Right to bear arms is also a left-wing thing. Well, okay, even if we accept the idea that the right to bear arms is also a left-wing thing, well, I believe in the right to bear arms. So how can I possibly be against everything left by your own definition? It's almost like you're an idiot. The problem with their formulation of reactionary is that they don't understand that sometimes, if things are going badly, it's actually a good idea to react to them. Right now, the left is going absolutely wild in the name of progress, even though there's no actual progress to be had in what they're doing. And if reasonable people acting in good faith disagree with what the left is doing and in fact think that it's harmful, is it not reasonable to react to that? Self-defense is fundamentally reactionary. If somebody's attacking you, you're reacting to that. We consider that to be legitimate. Stopping a thief or a rapist is reactionary. You are reacting to a bad situation, but we consider that to be legitimate. In reality, the word reactionary is a label they slap onto those who they think is opposed to the revolution. If they use that label in a way that shows that they believe it to be completely interchangeable with right-wing or conservative or center-right or even centrist, like someone like Vosh, then that person has basically shown themselves to only believe in one type of politics, the correct politics, as if there could ever be a thing. They have shown that they don't believe in spectrums, in degrees of things, that everything is in fact either with them or against them. And yes, I know that these people give lip service to the idea of the whole gender is a spectrum thing. But let's be honest, they don't really believe that either. That's why when you get biological males transitioning and becoming trans women, they're completely okay with it. But as soon as you get a lot of biological women transitioning to be trans men, then suddenly it becomes a big fucking crisis. If this article said, why do so many teenage boys want to change gender? And what's behind it? And has the NHS been too quick to find a solution? This website would be shut down for transphobia immediately but it's because they really don't believe in gender as a spectrum. They see things in terms of male and non-male, and that's it. And non-male includes women, it includes genderqueer people, it includes non-binary people, and it includes trans women. To them, any avenue that takes you away from maleness is legitimate, and any avenue that brings you towards maleness is not. Therefore, trans women are fine and trans men are a problem. In this way, the left is actually remarkably transphobic. There is also another great critique of their concept of reactionary, 
It is that they are all themselves reactionary. The person who uses the term to label their political opponents as reactionary, they are reactionaries themselves. For example, communism is a dead ideology. It was conceived of like 150 years ago in reaction to a problem within capitalism that has largely been solved. Seriously, go talk to a commie on Twitter. They'll talk about working conditions in factories like there are still factories in the West like the economy hasn't changed in 150 years. They are part of a previous political paradigm, and they don't understand that capitalism has moved past them. I mean, look at the definition again. It's literally somebody who pines for a previous political paradigm. So would that mean that a communist in modern-day Russia is a reactionary? Because Russia transitioned away from communism after the fall of the Soviet Union? Would that mean that somebody in Nazi Germany was a reactionary if they wanted to go back to the Weimar Republic? By their own definition, yeah, kinda. The previous political paradigm ran basically from Bush Sr. through the two Clinton terms, through the two Bush Jr. terms, and then through the two Obama terms. That was the paradigm of, of neolibs and neocons basically being two sides of the same coin. They only really differed on social issues, but on economic issues, on foreign policy, they were pretty much the same. That is why, by the way, Obama expanded on a lot of George Bush's programs. He kept the wars up, the drone strikes up. A lot of the economic policies were similar. Obama did a lot of superficial stuff. There were a few social advancements made, but for the most part, he was just George Bush terms three and four. But Trump is different. Better or worse, regardless of whether or not you like him, he is a different kind of politician. He is not part of the neolib neocon consensus. And the immense amount of backlash he's received for the past four years has been, in part, because the left has become an entirely reactionary force. We all know that when push comes to shove, people like Vosh, people on the far left, will hold their nose and vote for Biden. They will cuck out. They will not stand by their principles. They will throw their lot in with the neolibs even as they talk about hating them. And to be honest, everything that's been happening recently has all been a neoliberal counter-revolution, to use their term. It's all been reactionary. When Trump got elected, that class of neolibs and neocons that had acquired positions and money and power and influence as a result of globalist policies were, for the first time in decades, thrown out of power. Voters across the world chose Brexit, they chose Trump, they chose populism, and they chose, in a sense, conservative nationalism. That is the direction politics have gone. But it's not simply Nazism or fascism just because it's nationalist. It is a different kind of politics. The only way you would view it as fascism is if you actually believe that everything is either you or not you. If you are that much of a tribalist. If you believe that you can't be neutral on a moving train. But because it is a new political era, the left losing its shit for the past four years has been reactionary. And those people on the ground, you know, the rioters, the people in Chaz, the protesters, even the peaceful protesters, YouTubers like Vosh, idiots on Twitter, even if they spout Marxist rhetoric, even if they genuinely believe that they are communists and they want to implement communism upon the world and the whole thing, their rhetoric and their beliefs even don't actually matter that much because they are simply being used by the old neolib neocon establishment as reactionaries. That's why the biggest push has come from the institutions, academia, media, large corporations, experts, whatever the fuck those are, big tech. You know, money is pouring into Black Lives Matter, pouring into all these groups. When these large monoliths are lining up behind the rank and file protesters and chanting, Viva la Revolution, we know it's not a revolution, it is a reaction. These groups do not seek a radically new arrangement. They seek a return to the pre-Trump, pre-Brexit status quo. That's why they back Biden. And as much as you have people crying about how terrible Biden is and how they're, they're never voting for Biden and how the DNC screwed them and all that and how, they, and how he's not socialist enough or whatever the fuck, they will still cuck out and vote for him. We are ultimately facing a leftist counter-revolution, as, as strange as it sounds, because counter-revolution is a, is a communist term. And it makes sense because the way that the communists use reactionary, they simply mean counter-revolutionary. If you are a person who opposes communism for one of the many, many different reasons that various groups oppose communism, you are a counter-revolutionary. And they basically use the term reactionary to refer to counter-revolutionary. But there are so many examples of these people being reactionaries themselves that it would take me way too long to go through them all. This video is already long enough. How many of you have seen this, the Democracy Matters Strategic Plan for Action? Apparently it's private and confidential. Uh, oops. And it comes out of Media Matters for America. This is not what we plan, but it's what we're built for. Like, listen to this. Trump has the legal authority, but we have the moral authority and the moral responsibility to oppose him. We are going to resist the normalization of Donald Trump. These are the words of a reactionary. 
These are the words of people who want to go back to the previous political paradigm. The old era where neolibs and neocons ran everything. Well, we're not in that era anymore. We have advanced. We have moved forward, as you would say. And using your logic, if you don't get on board with the present, then you are a force of the past. By their own definition, they are reactionaries. They still believe that the GOP is like the 1990s neocon party run by Pat Robertson types who want to censor rap music and video games like Jack Thompson or something. But that's not the case. The political landscape has changed. Those old guard neocons are gone. The last one left is what, Mitt Romney? No one gives a shit about Mitt Romney anymore. Trump has successfully routed them. Meanwhile, the neolibs are globalists. They have that in common with the communists who want global communism. And so every single leftist movement, supported by every single leftist YouTuber and commentator and reactionary, want to go back to that previous status quo. Even if they say they don't, the end result of their efforts will either be a reactionary return to normalcy, as Biden likes to call it, the return to the old neo-lib status quo that we have since moved past, or alternatively, a return much further backward, a return to the failed system of communism, a return to the gulags, to the millions of deaths to the complete squalor of the entire human race. Because no matter how often they talk about being a narco anything, it will always end up looking like the Soviet Union. So that is what a reactionary is. If someone calls you a reactionary, it's because they're a revolutionary. It's because they believe that all things under the sun, all of politics can be boiled down to either them or the fascists. And if you're not them, then you're the fascists. It's because that they believe that politics has a moral arc and that if you don't have the correct politics, you need to be purged. And it's because, regardless of what they believe, they want to implement totalitarian communism. And we have to stop them. All right, guys, I'm getting out of here. It's a nice day. Naomi and I are going to the beach. I'll talk to you soon. I love you.